Welcome back everyone. This is Frank Whiskey Charlie Zero Oscar. This video is the field setup for the FT710. So field, think of field setup as what would you need to do uh, to take the radio outside of the home. There's a few things that you want to consider. This video gives you some suggestions. It's very broad stroked. I mean there's a lot that you can um, think about when you take um, the radio outside of the home. But these are like some main points and then you can fill in um, some of the needs uh, that, you'll, that you'll have to make your deployment successful. Okay, the radio, right? You, uh, you can put it in the backpack, you can carry it in the box, uh, you can do anything with it really, put it, put it in a shopping bag or something. But I like to put it in a hard case. This is um, this is a, a seahorse case that's that's relatively old, more than 10 years. You can see the latches are are different. Um, so I didn't buy this case specifically for the FT710, but a lot of things fit nicely in here. And so let's open it. Let's see what we got. Okay. So we have the radio there. We have a watt meter. This is from Power Rec. You don't need anything fancy like this. There are less expensive versions, but um, the uh, watt meter is very important to determine how much uh, amps are uh, have been taken away from the radio from the battery. We'll talk about the battery a little bit in a minute. Um, the power uh, cord. Now the power cord is uh, when you get it, you're gonna need to put something to it. It just comes uh, stripped, the wires are stripped so that you can put it into a power source uh, at home. But in this case, because I'm gonna do field deployment, I'm gonna use a battery. I decided to put a, um, to put the Anderson power poles on it. Uh, if you need to learn how to do that, I have a video for that. Um, I'll put it on the description below. But um, this, uh, this doesn't come with a tie. Uh, these ties are really nice. Uh, you can get them on Amazon. I'll put the link there too. Um, that keeps those things very nice and snug. Uh, they do give you, Yesu does give you a microphone. This is the SSM75E. Uh, so you're gonna need that too. And then the battery. Oh, the battery. The battery. Um, these bioinno batteries are becoming more of a standard for um, ham radio. Uh, so this one in particular is the 144 watt hour BLF 1212A, 12 volts, 12 amps. 12 times 12 gives you 144. So 12 volts, 12 amp hours, meaning um, if your radio sucks up 12 amps, uh, in one hour this will run out. Over here it says 12 amp max continuous, which is good because so far using the radio I only see it below 11 amps, uh, and then it's not continuous all the time. And it says right here 20 amp max peak. Uh, cool thing about these batteries, they have like circuitry inside, so um, you know they, they protect your investment. Uh, circuitry in terms of like you know overcharging it or you know making sure that you don't drain it fast enough or drain it completely uh, another thing about these uh, bioinno batteries they come with the Anderson power poles not all of these batteries do but uh, a lot of these the ones that are made for ham radio is priceless this is awesome and over here this one this connection is so that you can connect it to the wall, uh, which is very cool. Or other accessories, like a car, um, if you have one of those 12 volt battery, uh, no, 12 volt connection, no wait, a 12 volt socket cigarette lighter, <laughs> you can also use uh, that in here and such. Okay, these batteries are, this battery is enough to power this radio. Um, so far, I, I would estimate if you're talking all the time, probably two hours. I haven't, I haven't really 
um, played with the radio enough to suggest more than two but for right now with 12 uh, 12 amps I think it'll be uh, sufficient and then the radio we'll see the radio in a little bit but that's the radio you can see fits um, here uh, one thing you'll 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 note that um, I got a little foam piece here so the VFO knob is not going to be slamming in there and um, you can customize this in a different for format you can even put foam here to, to squish this even better uh, but okay I'm gonna set up the radio and how that should look in a little bit so what else would you need right other than the radio well the antenna so I have here a quarter wave ground plane antenna and I'm not gonna take it all out but a uh, quarter wave ground plane antenna is really easy to build they're just uh, this one's for 20 meters these are like 16 and a quarter foot long wires I have a video on on quarter wave ground plane antennas this thing is really relatively inexpensive to build and it's a great first antenna you don't need to buy fancy dipoles or you know uh, fancy end fed half waves even though they're convenient they all have their their convenience but if you if you really want to get into your first antenna uh, try a quarter wave ground plane antenna that's that's great um, I have headphones so these these uh, these are sort of being nice little bags uh, they have different things inside of them but in this case I have my headphones all right headphones are important in doing uh, field operations especially when you're outside like right now I'm over here in Bolsa Chica State Beach uh, if you ever been to this beach before PCH there's a bunch of cars coming back and forth the headphones are going to help you uh, listen to those weak signals and um, very invaluable instead of using the built-in uh, speaker uh, from the radio then I have other bags here too like for example this one uh, is for mobile so I have a uh, Tar Heel 75A uh, and I use this thing called a Tunematic. The, the Tunematic uh, moves the antenna up and down um, based on certain frequencies that, that I've uh, programmed it in. It has a bunch of wires. So again, it's nice to have these little bags. And then you can always put these bags inside of a bigger box, of course. Um, a laptop uh, again we're talking about deployments right and you're thinking well don't you just need a radio and an antenna and your microphone and a battery and there you go yeah of course that's all you really need but sometimes there are other pieces of equipment that you might need for example that are convenient for you so for example for POTA activations I use a computer now this one I don't know which one this is one of those um, uh, yoga ones or something it's a 14 inch uh, they still sell it it's it has this weird uh, carpet on on the on the surface um, but this particular 14 inch uh, Lenovo laptop is a beaut um, it has two Thunderbolts I think they are Thunderbolts um, audio out a um, HDMI and then it has two USB 3's a micro and then this one uh, is a power button it kind of messed up it fell one time it's a very nice size and it's really relatively inexpensive I've seen them for $4.99 but I got mine for like $3.25 or something so I thought that was a great deal and I use it a lot for my uh, port activations now using having a phone that has internet is a is cool because when you do soda or poda partic particularly in poda um, using hammers software you can see who's calling you and uh, the phone if you if you can afford it and if it's available you can tether that uh, so the laptop um, I'll talk a little bit more now about 
powering your devices because a lot of times when you're in the field, you might run out of power. So you can get something like a Jackerty. You don't need to get a Jackerty or you can build your own. And I've, I've built uh, three now, three solar generators. This is, a, this is one of these generators um, that are compact. This is a very nice one actually. This one's a, the Jackerty Explorer 300. Uh, you can charge it uh, through solar power or solar cells with an adapter or of course you can plug it in to uh, charge it at the house. Uh, it has a USB-C or USB-C PD 60 watts. This will charge my laptop. Two USB um, threes and then two outlets and then a cigarette lighter. You don't call them that but I don't know what other name to call it. Um, this is super neat. I use this as a backup, so if, if I'm uh, in the field, my battery runs out uh, for my laptop, I have something to charge it. I also have down there, which is kind of hard to see, but I recently purchased a power rec, uh, power box, the PW box. I wanted to see how it was built. I do have some uh, solar generated solar what is it uh, I always forget the solar generator solar generator right um, but this one in particular I wanted to I just wanted to look at the circuitry um, bulking this and so forth uh, this one can power the radio as well there's a battery in here there's a 20 amp 20 amp battery um, this one has a, a QC3 quick charge USB-C3 and uh, the 12 volt uh, cigarette socket and two uh, um, Anderson power poles which is pretty neat right and then these type of poles where you don't need Anderson power poles you just connect your radio here and it's charged and then a switch this is really nice I want to test this out I built one a couple of weeks ago um, but I wanted to look at um, another type of build just to, to see the difference between mine and theirs uh, for mobile operations I didn't say too much but uh, you'll need an antenna right and that are those antennas can be uh, implemented differently um, so in my case I have the antenna that's on my hatchback right now I'm using the diamond uh, what is it the HF CL 40 or something the um, and so this is the coax cable for it so I can connect it to the radio or I'll have the magnetic mounts but I haven't you haven't been using the magnetic mounts lately because the the mount the what is it the K K 400 KS 400 a diamond mount are is awesome what else well uh, I have this little field pouch that I got at 5.11 uh, uh, which is awesome it has many pockets but um, I have a light that you can connect uh, to the cigarette lighter to charge um, but inside it has many little trinkets many things that I might need in the future I have uh, here this one is the if I can get it out the rig expert stick pro invaluable especially when you're in a new environment you want to know if things are resonating your antenna right um, a light to put in your head this one I got at the Home Depot you can uh, make it red if you like at night so that it won't blind you <laughs> at night uh, and then some cables this this cable in particular is a patch cable um, oh, you know an internet patch cable for the uh, FT89857 and some more oh some more cables here so here I keep the essential USB-C cables uh, so I can charge my um, laptop or connect my rig expert 
and some other things to connect my radio. Ah, and another little pouch over here that has um, all these wonderful uh, over the over the three years now. What is it? 19, 20, 21, 22, three years, right? Uh, all the adapters for VHF, UHF, BNC, SMA, SMA you know, all these things that, uh, or even Allen wrenches, little screws that, you know, I'll need eventually. And I do have here a, um, a notebook. This notebook, I'll write notes, diagrams, right? Uh, has a pen there as well. And one other thing that I do like to carry for an emergency is my iPad, iPad mini. This thing is really, really neat because uh, if, my lap if I forget to bring my laptop, my iPad mini, I can do my put activations. And if I don't have my iPad mini, I use my phone, which I really don't like. I don't like to use the iPad mini as an emergency. And it also is good um, to tether with the um, rig expert. And there's probably other things there too. Here's more ties. Now, again, do you need all this? No, you don't. You definitely don't. Um, you can get a few things uh, first. And then as you... Um, as you go out more into deployments, you'll you'll find that you'll you'll make your own kit, special kit. That's a lot of things, actually. But the but the basic thing is protect your radio. Make sure you have a battery, a battery that will turn on your uh, radio, and then an antenna. You need an antenna somehow, and that's how you get started. Uh, you know, if you want to do FT8 type stuff, you're going to need um, other type of equipment um, to make sure that your radio connects to your laptop. Okay, um, let me show you how it looks set up with power and all that. Give you a sense of how it looks and, um, you know, talk a little bit more on the setup. All right, be right back. All right. Uh, welcome back, everyone. This is Frank Whiskey Charlie Zero Oscar. This is the FT710. It's finally out here. We've been waiting for it since July. It just came out in the end of September. I got this one in HRO, Anaheim. And uh, it's a really nice radio. It definitely is going to compete with the IC7300 and it's going to be interesting to know what people like about this radio compared to the IC7300 because the IC7300 is uh, has taken the lead in SDR technology that's affordable out to the masses and if you listen to HF radio many people have it and many, many people like it and then there are some people that think it's just not a great radio well, I think people forget <laughs> that the 7300, the IC7300 is an intro radio, just like this one. And so I think Yesu created this radio, the FT710, for those people who love Yesu and want something um, that will be the next level to their 991A. Um, and so this radio fits between two radios and... and one of them is the 991A, which is a shack in a box. And then the other radio that's on the higher end on this one, the FTDX10, which is 400 or more dollars more expensive. This radio is $1,200, and I think uh, the price uh, is that way because, you know, it's new. And by the time Christmas comes around, it'll probably be at a more affordable price. What affordable means, that's a question, right? Because hardware these days, even 12-year-old uh, hardware, uh, has a very high price. It has not gone down at all. But that's a different story. Okay, so I'm sure you've seen 
some videos now on the FT710 and how it looks and feels. And, um, you know, one of, one of the things that I noticed compared to the FTDX10, this doesn't have a ring here, uh, like a function ring. So that's not there. You know, you have your AF gain, RF gain, <coughs> function button. You press on it, gives you all these functions, uh, which is a nice, better layout than the FT991A and it's more accessible and then down here these menus here if you click on them you go into the, like more into the settings you have radio settings CW settings operating settings display settings and extension settings the connections in the back are like you know most modern radios it has a USB USB B connection where you hook up to your radio to do um, FT8 and it has a USB A ports to do uh, so you can use a mouse. Um, it has a, a, a display port, which is an older technology. I'm not sure, you know, did they did they uh, do a survey to ham radio operators and then they ask them what they need? Why not an HDMI? You know, why not USB C? Those are very modern tools, but you know, uh, it's it's as you know, H ham radio takes a little while. For them to move away uh, for certain type of connections and then every, you know all the old you know everything else in there the cat control linear amplifier stuff um, everything that that you desire is back there um, and then the buttons you know the button layouts are cool you know you have the band and the mode button here and the VM button has a DNR you know, some people are making uh, a very big deal about, you know, the DNR, um, digital noise reduction technology that's available for the radio. It's It sounds very nice. You know, you have uh, a headphone jack, which is really important in the front. That's nice. And an SD card so you can record your, um, your QSOs. A tuner, which is really nice, uh, which, you know... Uh, if you have like an FT891 or no, yeah, an FT891 or an FT857, you know those things don't have uh, tuners, so you have to bring your own tuner. Uh, it's hefty, and like I mentioned before, it has a very similar size to the 991A. Um, you can run the FT710 with a battery. Uh, this one's the BioNO uh, BLF1212A. Um, I'm running 80 watts and when I run 80 watts it, it takes about close to 11 amps uh, right now it's draining about 1.6 amps so it's respectable you know I mean this type of radio has a lot of electronics has a fan to cool it down and so forth so there's a lot of things oh one other thing also is that has that uh, this one right here the DSP uh, the shift with notch contour which is really nice that's going to be something that I'm definitely going to look into and as you can see I don't know what I'm doing you can see that there's a little notch right there isn't it and oh, that's the power wow see there we go we turned it off it's a little bit challenging uh, to touch uh, sometimes sometimes uh, touching the button get to be a little bit a little bit more higher a little bit lower um, all the scale the analog scale is really nice you touch on this you can choose other things like ALC one thing that it has <laughs> that Yuzu hasn't really fixed is the length of time at which these little these some of these menus will pop up it'd be nice if it was there a little bit longer uh, but look over here you do your attenuation uh, which is cool right your amplification and your uh, DNF and your a ACC pretty cool right that is really neat that's um, definitely way better interface than the 991A um, other than that you know the the quality of the audio wow very nice I think it might even have an edge to the 7300 remember the 7300 the IC 7300 is five years old but 
they are the marketing leaders, I think, on SW, on, on uh, SDR radios. I mean, you hear a lot of people on HF being, yeah, this is my IC7300, which sounds superb. Um, although I think this might kick some behind in terms of the way uh, you can hear people. Now, this is an entry level radio. This is not, this is no FT DX10, which probably has a lot more processing uh, so that you can, you can hear those weak signals. But I already have made contacts in Panama, which is pretty neat over here in Bolsa Chica State Beach, uh, Japan. You know, um, which I have never had before until I got this radio. Now, could have been band conditions and could I have listened to those with the FT-857? Mm, probably not. FT-587, FT which I love my radio, does have some noise. But one of the advantages of the FT-587D, it's more portable. Less, it doesn't weigh as much. You can take the face, and you know you can you can mount it anywhere. Um, you can run probably longer with the same battery, um, but you know it's a, li a little bit noisy, um, and it's 22 year old technology. This is not. This is the latest and greatest. Um, is it portable? Mm, you, I don't think so. <laughs> um, can you do portable with this? Of course. Can you do this for uh, a mobile? Yeah, you can You can put a bracket on it and then put it underneath somewhere. It'll work. The 991A, people use it uh, for mobile. Why not this one? Um, I know there's going to be a lot of people saying, what should I buy? And, you know, is, is, should I buy a 991A or should I buy this one? And, man, that's a very, very hard question to to answer. I'm going to make another video, probably at home, sitting down with my notes, because uh, I have a lot of notes on the radios that I've had so far, and as I've as I've been more and more involved in HF uh, and understanding like some of the radio technologies and the antennas, that's that's another thing. If you're just starting on HF. You know, the radio is really important, but you can get a 20-year-old radio. You don't need anything fancy like this, but you're going to need a good antenna. Uh, and you don't have to buy, you know, $300, $500 antenna either. You can you can make your own antenna uh, with um, wire that you might have at home. And, and you just have to buy, like, an adapter or something. And, of course, you need a coax cable. And you'll be surprised by the efficiency and and how well these antennas can do like the quarter wave ground plane antenna i have a video on that too um but so far i'm liking it uh i'm liking the radio it it, it really has a lot of neat features it also comes with a speaker i didn't bring the speaker with me and you know it has you know it they've made uh, some re research and development on that speaker to make it sound great but I always say that if you're going to take it portable or mobile, you're going to need to use the headphones. You're going to be able to hear those contacts better. Okay, so I hope this is just a little intro into the FT710. Um, there's a lot of things that um, I have to say about this radio. Uh, I'll be doing a beginner's guide e eventually because I don't... There's a lot of things that I'm still like not knowing about these higher end. I consider this a higher end radio than the 991A. I mean, that's a beginner's uh, radio. So is this one, but it has nice technology features that I'm not familiar with. By the way, um, this this video is probably going to be posted by the time the sale is over. But the FT710. And the FTDX10 were priced the same way. Um, and if that ever happens, the FTDX10 is probably a better deal for home. Um, it has way better technology, um, which was surprising when I when I got this at HRO. I was, they were like, "Yeah, the FTDX10, same price." 
So that was pretty shocking to me. Um, but so they were telling me that most likely this, this radio is going to lower, be lower in price during the holidays and such. Um, and again, the F, FT 991A, the FT 710, the FT DX10, or even the FT DX 101, they all have different things or, you know, qualities that a, some HF operators need, you know, ham operators need. And where does this land? If you're thinking of an IC7300, you might want to consider one of these. Um, I can't tell you which one to buy at the moment. All I can say is that I'm really excited to have this radio. I'm ready to learn and to change the menu look and feel and just, you know, get to know it a little more and do some more contacts. So, um, more and more, I will be talking about this radio and getting to know it and, uh, you know, getting a, a sense of uh, if it's really something that's really compatible or competitive to the IC7300. So far, yes. Um, but the only gripe I have is the, is the interface. Uh, IC7300 has a better interface, but this is definitely way better interface than the 991A. Um, it, the, the ability that you can touch things and it does things is really nice. Um, but there's certain features that uh, I think are missing and I'm and other people who have looked at this radio have also mentioned it so maybe Yesu is 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 considering something uh, different all right so you have any questions please ask them in the comments section um, I hope you have a great week and I hope to hear from you soon this is Frank whiskey Charlie's or Oscar see you later bye bye